Well, welcome to lecture 10 in the uh, section 4 on confidence intervals. And in this lecture, what we're going to do is look at confidence intervals for the binomial distribution. And of course, we're still working with large samples, which means that in this course, we would set that at n greater than or equal to 30. Now, again, I remind you that that's a little arbitrary. You may find differences as you go out in practice, but for now, that's what we will use. The central limit theorem assures us that p hat is normally distributed about p with a standard deviation of p hat equal to the square root of p times q over n. Now, I want you to think about that just a minute because what we're doing here is we're equating uh, the situation that we had with x bar distributed around mu to p hat being distributed around p. The central limit theorem not only assures us that p hat is normally distributed around p with this given the standard deviation, but it doesn't really matter whether the binomial distribution is normally distributed or not. The p hat distribution will be normally distributed. Now, of course, we're reminded that mu for the p hat distribution is p itself. So p hat is normally distributed around p with a standard deviation equal to the square root of p times q over n. Now, does it make sense that just as x bar is normally distributed around mu, that p hat would be normally distributed around p? Well, certainly it does. Well, let's make one more leap in our logic. If we can construct a confidence interval for mu, since x bar is normally distributed around mu, then we can also construct a confidence interval for p since p hat is normally distributed around p. Now, here is the formula for the confidence interval for p hat, uh, for p, with p hat normally distributed around p. Now, don't pass out. This really isn't that bad. You have p hat values. You have a z-score. Of course, this is large sample. And the z-score is determined by the level of confidence you want. And then you have the standard deviation on both sides of the p hat distribution, which is the square root of p times q over n. Now, one has simply to determine the required values, p hat, z, p, q, and n, plug them in and solve the formula. Now, let's look at this problem just a minute. A random sample of 500 members of the Waller family indicates that 275 have done time in the big house. Uncle Sam Waller would like to see an 80% confidence interval for the true percentage of Waller family members who have done time in the big house and construct this interval for him. Well, the first thing you notice is that this is a confidence interval problem, and it's for the true percentage, so it's a, it's a binomial distribution a confidence interval for P. Now, this is a confidence interval for P. We see that right off the bat. Now, what do we know? Well, we read through and we know p hat because p hat is 275 divided by 100. Once we know p hat, we also know q hat. And a z score for an 80% confidence level is 1.28. And of course, the number in the sample is 500. Now, what do we do if we set out for this and we don't know p and q? There's nothing in here that tells us the values of p and q. Well, that's pretty easy. If we don't know p and q, we would simply use p hat and q hat. Since our sample size is so large, the standard deviations should converge upon each other. Now, we would use p hat and q hat if we don't know p. Here is the formula that we would use in order to solve this problem. Our confidence interval is p hat minus z times the standard deviation of the p hat distribution, and p hat plus z time the standard deviation of the p hat distribution. Now we move on through this and we'll remind you again of the things that we know. We know the value of p hat, which is 0 0.55, and from that we can calculate q hat, which is 1 minus p hat, or 0 0.45. Our z-score for 80% confidence is 1.28. We obtain that from the table. And n for this problem is 500, since we have 500 which have been randomly sampled. Now, since we don't know p and q, we will plug in p hat and q hat values. So we have p hat minus our z score 
times the square root of p hat q hat over n. And here we have p hat plus our z score times the square root of p hat q hat over n. Now keep in mind that this is simply a, a p hat value plus, plus or minus a z score value times the standard deviation of the distribution. We would work through, the first thing you need to do is solve this animal. 1.28 times the square root of 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 over 500. You would multiply 0 0.55 times 0 0.45. Then you would divide that amount by 500. Then you would take a square root and multiply it by 1.28. And that gives us 0 0.55 minus 0 0.0285 and 0 0.55 plus 0 0.0285. We now have a confidence interval, an 80% confidence interval for P, which says we're 80% certain that the true value of P lies between 0 0.5215 and 0 0.5785. We're 80% confident that between 52.15% and 57.85% of the Waller family have done time in the big house. Now, Uncle Sam knows all. Old Uncle Sam Waller is pleased. We've done well. Well, I see that you've made your way back to the doghouse. Old Waller's uh, office in here where he's sitting around enjoying life. Just want to remind you that the central limit theorem assures us that x bar is normally distributed around mu and assures us that p hat is normally distributed around p. And it doesn't matter whether the original distributions are normally distributed or not, x bar is normally distributed around mu, p hat is normally distributed around p. Now you know all.